So we have some sort of wire that's in a constant electric field or constant magnetic field. So this is a not straight wire. But notice that the B field, the magnetic field, is constant. So it's a curved wire in a constant magnetic field. And what we have to do is we have to take this wire and we have to break it into little segments. <laughs> little piece DS, right? Because we're talking about the length of the wire. So we have to break the wire into little pieces. So instead of having the magnetic force equals current times length with the cross product of the magnetic field, we have little dFB is equal to current times dS cross B. So we've broken the wire into little tiny pieces, and they have little tiny forces on the magnetic forces. And we're going to take the integral. If we take the integral of both sides on the left hand side, we just get the magnetic force. On the right, well, we're going to assume that the current is constant. So the current will come out. We'll have the integral of dS uh, from points A to B. And this is going to be cross product with the magnetic field. So what we're doing is we're taking dS, right? All of these little pieces at each individual point. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the whole piece. Current is constant. Magnetic field is constant. So the integral from A to B of dS, we call L prime. Because it's just be the straight line, it would just be the straight line distance from where you start to where you end. So the magnetic force would be equal to I times L prime cross product with the magnetic field. So L prime is defined as the straight line between A and B. And this is, L prime is essentially the vector sum of all of these dS's. Now, a special case that I do want to talk about is the magnetic force if you have I times the closed loop integral of Yes. Now we've dealt with a closed surface integral, right? Closed surface integral just simply we, we meant we had a closed surface. A closed loop, because we're taking the integral with respect to ds, a linear, simply means we have we complete a full circle. Right? That's all that means when we have a closed loop. So what is the integral of a closed loop ds? Okay, sure. And what's the value of s? Remember, this right here, L prime, is the vector sum of all of these little ds's. Jenkins? Zero. Zero. You start and end at the same spot. What's your overall displacement? Zero. Zero. All right. So, the magnetic force on a closed loop in a constant magnetic field is zero. The net force, because L prime is essentially zero. When you go all the way around that, and this is actually a poor picture, the magnetic field should extend beyond all the way to show that it's, the whole thing is in the constant magnetic field. But the net force on this loop because if you add up all of the vector sum of all the ds's, you will get zero. All right, we will do, okay, we'll do that example problem. Let us enjoy one of the decompression sessions. So please stand up, enjoy a one minute decompression session. All right, an example. We have, a constant magnetic field which is oriented vertically upward. In that magnetic field, we have a wire that is bent into the shape of three parts of a square, and then this part is bent into a semicircle. So this distance right here is 2r. This distance as well is 2r, and 
this is our radius. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's identify the various pieces of the wire. This is going to be, we'll call wire one, wire two, wire three, and wire four. So we, we can go through and figure out the magnetic force on each piece of the wire, assuming that the current is moving this direction or uh, clockwise from where you are throughout this wire. The magnetic force on wire one. First off, we should be able to figure out its direction right now. Point your fingers in the direction of the current, curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. That force should be out of the page, which is the positive k direction. So we know its direction. It's in the positive k. We also know the equation I L cross V, which is equal to I L B sine theta. So current, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to put numbers on here. Current times the length. Uh, what is the length of wire 1, Hillary? Uh, 2R. Times 2R times the magnetic field, which is B, times the sine of the angle. What is the angle here, Sierra? 90 degrees, the angle between the length of the wire and the magnetic field. So this right here is our 90 degrees, so that's going to be 90 degrees. So we have 2I, R, B, and we identified the direction as the positive K direction, the force on one. The force on, let's do the force on wire three next. Again, we have IL cross B. What's changed from wire one to wire three? Um, comes current direction is left. Current direction is left. Anything else? No, if you look, it's got the same length, everything, the same angle. The only difference is the current direction, so it's going to change the direction of the force. So we again have 2IRB. What is the direction of the force? John? Um, Walk me through it. So you're going to go to the left, yes. and then you're going um, take. Okay, yeah, they cope with the magnetic field, and then you can get points. Okay, I just want to point out that you're doing this, yeah. which is a bad habit. You want to curl your fingers and keep those fingers straight. Uh, and so, yes, the magnetic uh, force then is going to be into the page or the negative K direction. We have both force one and force three. Magnetic force on force four. Again, we have ILB sine theta. Uh, stay as a walk me through it, please. On wire four, which is this wire right here. Yep. Well, we'll start with the sine of zero, uh, sine of zero degrees, which is going to give you zero. So it doesn't matter what the length is of the current or the magnetic field, because we have zero degrees, so it's going to be equal to zero. Now, you should be able to tell me the force on wire two, and there you should be able to give me two reasons why you know the force on the wire two is equal to blank. Give me the answer. Hold on. It's equal to zero. Okay, there are two reasons for that. Give me one of them. The, like, the starting and ending points are going to be exactly the same as wire four. If we go from, and I'll just identify them, points A to point B, that's confusing, let me move that B down. From, from point A to point B, this right here is L prime, right? So one reason is if we do I L prime cross B, or I L prime B sine theta, that theta, again, well in this particular case, because the current would go this way, it would be the sine of 180 degrees, but that's still going to be zero. What's another reason we know the magnetic force on wire two is equal to zero? James? You know it's a closed loop and you already have uh, 
three and one cancel each other out, since four is zero, two has to be zero. Because in a closed loop, the magnetic force is going to be zero as long as the magnetic field is constant, which is what we have here. When we add one, three, and four together, we get zero. Therefore, the last wire must also have a magnetic force of zero. So this wire has a net force of zero on it. Let's draw just a brief picture here. We have for force one, this force is going to be positive K, which is out of the board. This is force one. Uh, force two, uh, um, this one is going to be into the board, so it's going to be this direction, or force three, excuse me. So is the net torque equal to zero? No. The net force is equal to zero, but not the net torque. So what we're going to do now is go through and figure out the net torque on a current carrying wire in a, a current carrying loop in a magnetic field. And this is the precursor of how a motor and a generator work.